For the first time, the Oregon Ducks and the Wisconsin Badgers will meet in a bowl game. And you will notice the Space Age helmets on the Ducks as they are ready to pour onto the field here before a capacity crowd. many of their fans back for the second straight year. Here come the Badgers. This has been the Nissan pregame shift. And what a shift in weather conditions as we compare three sites. Pasadena, 82 degrees right now, 20 degrees back in Madison, and 54 up at the Northwest in Eugene. So the captains will now come out. Grand Marshal, of course, J.R. Martinez will flip the coin. We have an ACC referee and crew here today. And great, great honor for Brad Allen, who's one of the fine officials in that conference. So the captain shake hands at midfield. Now let's go down to midfield. All right, gentlemen, congratulations on an outstanding season and welcome to the 98th Rose Bowl presented by Vizio. Today we have some special guests who are here to help celebrate your accomplishments, okay? The president of the Pasadena Tournament of Roses, Mr. Richard Jackson, his wife Sharon, and their four grandchildren have presented the coin to you, okay? Gentlemen, W for Wisconsin, O for Oregon. Whichever team lands up will be the winner of the toss, all right? Our grand marshal today, a great American hero and patriot, J.R. Martinez. J.R., if you will flip the coin, please. Good luck to both teams and leave it all on the field. Have no regrets. Wisconsin has won the toss. Your option, we'll take the ball. You're going to receive. Which direction will you kick? We'll kick that way. All right, form a line facing this direction. Wisconsin has won the toss and will receive. Good luck, gentlemen. So let's go down to the third member of our team. Aaron Andrews is with Chip Kelly. Aaron, Happy New Year. Happy New Year, Brent. Thank you so much. Chip, let me ask you here. You told me a pregame. You haven't played in temperatures like this since August. How will the heat affect your speed throughout the course of the game? We hope because of our conditioning and the way we practice that it's not going to bother us. But because we rotate so many guys, hopefully that's going to be to our benefit. Over the past two bowl games, you guys have met with some pretty physical defenses. Had a tough time. What has to click early today? Same thing, and we can't turn the ball over early, and that's what we did in some of those other games. You know, we got to make sure we hold on to the football. Turnovers are going to be key today. All right, thanks. Thank you. All right, Brent. And on the other side, Brett Bielma, back for the second straight year, his sixth season as the Badger head coach. One of the great scenes in all of college athletics is the start of a Rose Bowl as we allow our director producer and cameraman to take you around this great stadium just settle back everybody the Badgers will get the ball first enjoy.
underway in Pasadena. Abraderis from the nine for the Badgers. Russell Wilson will come to the 22 yard line for the first offensive series. Russell Wilson, as many of you know, is such an interesting story. Herbie, when you look back, of course, he signed a big contract with the Colorado Rockies, and because he had graduated, he could transfer from North Carolina State and play football at Wisconsin. Graduating in three years in Raleigh tells you a lot about his work ethic. It took him one month to learn the Wisconsin offense, to be ready for two a days, to win the position. He voted unanimously as a captain by his two mates, teammates by after just being on campus for one month and has had a great year with only three interceptions. Peter Kahn starts at center. That's a story. Monty Ball hammers to the 31, and that will be a continuing story. Herbie, some of our impact players. Well, we've talked a lot already about Russell Wilson. Obviously, his ability to throw and run today will be big. How physical can Monty Ball be today with great quickness? Nick Toon has got to be a difference maker on one side when he's matched up against some smaller corners from Oregon. And Jared Abraderis has had a great year, averaging 16 yards a catch. So Khan's missed the last three games with that ankle injury. Right back to it for a first down. Ball hammers his way to the 39-yard line, and Michael Clay with the tackle for the Ducks. Interesting, the first couple plays, Wisconsin showing their power, running between the tackles and running downhill against this Oregon defense. Oregon knows they're a bit undersized up front. And Nick Aliota, their defensive coordinator, is more than willing to take chances by attacking with safeties to get him down in the box. The big boys go to work again. Near midfield for still another first down. So that front with Peter Kahn's back at center. Let's show you these 300-pounders who have done such a sensational job. Ricky Wagner. And there, of course, moving back is Travis Frederick to left guard, Kevin Zeitler, Josh Oglesby. Look at the size of those biggers. And you could argue that it is, when Kahn's is in there, it's the best and most physical offensive line in the country, along with Stanford, probably the two top offensive lines we saw this year in college football. From their own 49. Sticking with it. And finally, the Ducks are able to come up with a play, allowing only one yard with DeWitt Stuckey, number 52, taking on the running back. And fresh troops already on the field for Nick Aliotti. And that is going to be a story because you know how quickly the Oregon offense moves. Aliotti up here in the box told me before the game he has got to keep rotating his front all game long or they're going to get worn out. James White now the running back. First pass of the game, and it's complete on the slant to Toon. This is one of the ways that Wisconsin's going to try to combat Oregon attacking and committing too many people to the line of scrimmage. The offensive line in the backs actually ran a run play. This is a design power play. So the line went ahead and ran a running play, and he looked off to the left, and he saw they had too many guys up close. We so quickly threw it out to Nick Toon. Congratulations to Michigan State in triple overtime. They defeat Georgia. We welcome those of you who have been watching the Spartans' first series of the game in the Rose Bowl. And the Badgers, Russell Wilson, back-to-back -back passes and another first down. He gets to the outside, and Monty Ball, the great tailback, who has excellent hands, makes his first perception. Well, uh, this is what they call creep. The defensive line does not get down into the line of scrimmage, and this is a good job of recognizing they bring one too many. The linebacker, DeWitt Stuckey, does not get out that time in coverage, gets locked up with Nick Toon, makes it an easy read and throw that time for Russell Wilson. So the Badgers started this drive on their own 23-yard line, and now they have driven to the Ducks' 38 play action and it's beautiful Russell Wilson goes deep Abraderis has got a touchdown a beautiful play action call by Paul Christ all set up by the hammering of Monty Ball and they bit on the fake 
Brent, as you said, when they run the football, it sets up this little outside move and up against a true freshman. He went right by him at Wisconsin. That is a textbook drive by Paul Chris, the offensive coordinator. Run the football, get the safeties up, and then get him in one-on-one -on -one coverage and go right by him with the double move for the touchdown. Philip Welsh tacks on the extra point. Russell Wilson and the Badgers strike first in the granddaddy of them all. Welcome you back to the 98th Rose Bowl game presented by Vizio. 82 degrees here in Pasadena, California. Two great groups of fans. You can see the, the Duck fans gathered together and, of course, the Badgers. Be interesting to see how Oregon bounces back here after giving up that touchdown drive. Some Georgia and Michigan State fans are just saying, oh, wow, <laughs> look at that helmet. <laughs> right. You believe that? Molly, have you seen that? You can <laughs> see yourself. The Anthony Thomas over his head it will come out on the 20 yard line. Now that was a, again a, the kind of drive Wisconsin wants all started by Monty Ball a little play action. Now you have the corner ISOed one on one and I'll tell you Jared Aberderis runs as sharp a route as anybody you're going to see the former walk on took advantage of the young true freshman out there on an island. And the freshmen have to carry the load on the corners today because Anthony Gilden has been battling an injury. So Mitchell and Hill and all the other youngsters, Ek Preolamu, who was there, they're going to have to pick it up. And Darren Thomas is forced to keep it on the first play of the game. And Mike Taylor, the leading tackler in the Big Ten Conference, with his first stop here in the Rose Bowl. Well, Wisconsin's been preparing for three weeks to face this tempo. They've had two scout offenses running at him to try to simulate what Oregon's offense might be like. Now they're seeing it for the first time. Motions to Anthony Thomas. And Darren keeps it again. First two plays of the game. And that's a story, Herbie, because he really has not carried the ball as much this year as he did last year. Yeah, and Chip Kelly will tell you it's because of the way their games have gone and the what defenses have dictated based on the option reads. It looks like in these first couple plays, Wisconsin saying, let's give him a read to keep the ball in his hands as opposed to giving it to Kenyon Barner or LaMichael James. An efficient passer. He still hands it off to LaMichael for the first down, trying to get to the edge where he's got that great speed. And Henry, number seven, the fine safety for the Badgers gets him out of bounds. A great block here by Mark Asper and Grassu, the center pulling around, just cuts down Chris Borland, the linebacker. And with LaMichael James, all he needs is a crease. And now here comes Oregon with the tempo. 23 yards, puts it at midfield. First pass of the game for the Ducks, and it is complete to Josh Huff. Now the impact players, it starts with Darren Thomas. Not just his ability to run, but his ability to throw. Michael James, of course. DeAnthony Thomas and Josh Huff have quick, big playability in the passing game today. Something Wisconsin's concerned about. And about your territory. And coming back with great stop by Nizegwu on that play right there on Michael James, his second carry. Darren Thomas, Brent, you said it. He hasn't really had to run the ball as much this year comes in 22 and 3 as a starter really I, I think has fought through some some uh, injuries earlier in the year watching him to practice this week with you just seems to be in complete command and understands this offense right now very very well so the Anthony motions Darren looks that way throws to an open receiver reaching for the end zone and it's down on the one yard line two and a makes the catch and the line judge right there spotted it just inside the one yard line. Watch the patience by Thomas. He wants to throw it right there and he pulls back, buys a little bit more time and then throws it up in the air. And now LaMichael steps in for the tying touchdown. 
It did not take the Ducks long. These two teams, folks, combined, have put up 90 points a game. <laughs> we are just underway with 14 <laughs> and 9.41 to go here in the first quarter. How about Michael James getting his first touchdown in a BCS Bowl game? He's played against Ohio State, Auburn last year, and now against Wisconsin. And, of course, that formation for the extra point, they show it to, and then they'll shift back out of it. Donato for the tie. So two and a has been their go to guy all season long. 40 catches for 441 yards. He sets up the touchdown. And Michael James one of the best running backs in the country picks up six. College football, the Rose Bowl game, is presented by Vizio, delivering entertainment freedom for all. Bud Light, it's the sure sign of a good time. Here we go. The 2012 Ford Explorer, Drive One, and DirecTV. If you call yourself a sports fan, you've got to get DirecTV. Call 1-800-DIRECTV. We're seeing some great views of this game, courtesy of the DirecTV Ultimate picture cam and for the second time here today the Ducks will kick it away Rob Beard is the kickoff man Aberderis James White back deep for the Badgers Thomas of course checking with his offensive coordinator Mark Helfrick upstairs At the he slips a little bit, regains his balance, and out to about the 21 yard. Let's check this. There's a uh, penalty flag, I think. Was it thrown late, Herbie, or not? Brent, we, we talked about the, uh, the quarterbacks having to make big plays in the pass game. Here, how about the patience we talked about of Darren Thomas waiting initially, then settling back and throwing it downfield to two and eight, bought just enough time there and makes a big play in the pass game. Yeah, there was no uh, there was no flag thrown on that on that far sideline. So Russell Wilson will come back out here. Monty Ball on that scoring drive of the Badgers carried four times for 27 yards. Here's his fifth carry. And he got close to the 25, and John Boyette, the safety, makes his first stop. This is the last drive, and this is really started by Russell, Russell Wilson trying to be able to throw the ball, but really Monty Ball, they pounded the Oregon defense with the running game, and then it's set up with the play action and getting it downfield, getting the one-on-one -on -one coverage. Russell Wilson very comfortable, whether it's in the pocket or outside, with his accuracy. Second down and seven. Wisconsin move there. Quick the slant side. and Toon grabs it, but the penalty had been called as Herbie pointed out. Movement over there. Prior to the snap, false start. Offense, number 48. Five yard penalty. Second down. That was Jacob Pedersen, the fine tight end. To give you an idea of what these two teams are up against here today, look at the time that they took over an extra minute for the Badgers and the Ducks have got their defense right back on the field. Draw play, Monty Ball breaks to daylight for a first down. Russell Wilson with a brush block. Ball still on his feet. And across the 40-yard line with the day's best run here in the early going. Boy, this offensive line doing some great things up front with some seal blocks. And again, with these kind of backs, they're going to run through arm tackles. Two arm tackles he's able to get through. Look at that stiff arm. 
And it's so impressive to see Monty Ball, who lost 20 pounds and wanted to get faster, but he did not lose his upper body strength and his lower body strength. And if you do not get in front of him and put your shoulders on him, you're not going to bring Monty Ball down. His two Oregon defenders learned that on that play. And after that 42-yard run, Herbie, he comes out and another good running back, James White. Play action to him. Russell Wilson's got time. Steps out to the left. Still looking for a receiver. Comes back across the field and incomplete. He had tune. And he made sure he was out in front of him so they didn't have a chance to intercept that ball and it went out of bounds. When Russell Wilson took a big hit after he threw that ball. It wasn't a flag. I don't think it was late, but it, it was a very, very big hit on him. The middle linebacker, Kiko Alonzo, put on him. As soon as he threw the ball, Alonzo lowered the boom on him. But Russell Wilson quick to get up. Alonzo was looking to make sure the yellow. Yeah. Hadn't been thrown. You can see that glance. Could be that replay. Second down and ten. And here's White, the youngster from Florida, and he is upended at the 34-yard line. And this will bring up a third down coming up for the Badgers. James White came into this season as 1A and 1B. In fact, he had a big year last year as a true freshman coming out of St. Thomas High School in South Florida. As Monty Ball excelled, James White kind of fell into the background but maintained a positive attitude and compliments Monty Ball very well. And he moves to the sideline as Ball steps back out. Need six. From the gun. Covered. Throws back beautifully. To the five yard line is Monty Ball who slipped out of the backfield was not the primary on the play and Russell was able to pick him up. And this is where mobility is something different in the Wisconsin offense. Scott Tolzien was a great quarterback but he didn't provide this element to this offense so they can run the football they can throw and when things break down Russell Wilson can buy enough time on a broken play to find Monty Ball to be able to pick up the first down and much more 30 yards on third and six a first and goal ball cuts back breaks a tackle Stuckey with the stop for the Ducks Stuckey makes the play, but Brandon Hanna, backup defensive end, in on a goal line situation, actually slowed Monty Ball down. So in the red zone, no team in the country more efficient overall than the Badgers. They have more touchdowns in the red zone, not just the field goals. That was that percentage that you saw there, but touchdown-wise, they are virtually unstoppable. Play action again. Russell Wilson got open field. He'll walk in. The defense over pursued to its left, and it left Russell Wilson with only one defender to be concerned with. And, and, and Nick Aliotti, he spends so much time. Because you got to be concerned about Monty Ball. You got to be concerned about the fullback in the flat, the tight end in the flag. Oh, by the way. Who's got the quarterback if he takes off and runs? It just you can't cover it all, and that's what a mobile quarterback who has poise and can throw provides for this offense. The extra point is tacked on. So another seven-play scoring drive for the Badgers. Could this be the Alamo Bowl all over again? <laughs> Farmers Insurance bringing you aerial coverage of the game and coverage for your auto home life and business. And what a glorious day to be soaring up above the granddaddy here in Pasadena, California. Well, I have a moment, Herbie. Uh, our great friend and colleague Keith Jackson has been a little bit under the weather, wasn't able to come to the Hall of Fame luncheon and the banquet the other day. And uh, we want to send along our very best to Keith. Uh, he's going to be fine. Uh, just a little bit of a setback and uh, uh, Keith we wish you nothing but uh, the best here in 2012 and we missed you at the proceedings my friend you were missed at that Hall of Fame luncheon 
course, Keith is a, is a member of the Hall of Fame here in the Rose Bowl. One of the great be. voices for many, many years. Another, another friend of ours will be in, introduced to the crowd here this afternoon. Dick Enberg was inducted at the luncheon. And, and just like Keith, another very class, class gentleman. So the Badgers leading it will kick it off. It'll be fielded on the four by Thomas. First time he's touched the ball. Close to the 30 yard line. And the Ducks will be coming out with Darren Thomas. Oregon again trying to emphasize their speed against this Wisconsin defense. Mike Taylor, number one in the team in tackles. Chris Borland, number two. And they want to try to challenge those linebackers in space with Michael James and Kenyon Barner. And if they overcommit, they're going to have to rely on Darren Thomas' ability to throw the football to DeAnthony Thomas and Josh Huff. Screen pass out to the left. DeAnthony to the 35-yard line. And so Herbie, it becomes which team is going to punt first? You know, I mentioned <laughs> the Alamo yeah. Bowl, that shootout between Baylor and Washington. I watched that game and I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it either. I mean, those are two great offenses, but two really, really bad defenses. Second down and four. Darren wants to set another screen and it's incomplete. The Michael James, the intended receiver. It's about trying to find matchups. And one thing about Chip Kelly is he keeps his foot on the accelerator. It's a big third down here early in the game just because of the way Wisconsin's offense is playing. Chip Kelly and the Ducks not used to feeling pressure here to try to live up with another offense is doing to them early in the game. And a penalty flag. That's a false start, and that'll cost them. Start. That'll make this offense third down a lot more difficult, won't it? Five yard penalty. That makes third down. So again, we go back to uh, what I mentioned during the season between these two offenses, and there you are, 90 points a game. Third and nine. Darren will take off. Runs into his own man, and he is down short of the first down. Bo Allen, credit for the stop. Bo comes up with a big play, and the Ducks are the first team to punt. Now it is big. We said it was a big third down. The false start did not help Oregon's cause. There just isn't anybody open downfield. I think Darren Thomas started to think he might be able to pick it up, but Wisconsin's front four does a good job of collapsing on him and not allowing him to make the yards for that first down. Everett Dare is very dangerous. Jackson Rice, the punter for the Ducks. Everett Darris from the 26-yard line. Breaks a tackle, and again to the 41-yard line. So the Badgers will have the ball for the third time. The Ducks have yet to stop them. If you've got a drawer full of knives, with Kirk Herb Street and Aaron Andrews, I'm Brent Musburger. It's 14-7. Badgers with the lead and with the ball. And now we see that Ekpre Olamu, the freshman from Chino Hills, California, back on the corner. Terrence Mitchell, a redshirt freshman from Sacramento, is on the other corner. So Ekpre Olamu was burned early, replaced last drive. James White on a play action. They're going to throw on first down. Russell sacked for the first time. The 34-yard line, the Ducks were able to get to number 16. And, and it's great coverage downfield. You know, these corners, these young corners have had to really grow up in the second half of the season. They played some really prolific passing offenses in the Pac-12. And there are times they've held up and times they've been exposed. Early in this game, they've lost some one-on-one -on -one matchups. But Nick Aliotti and Chip Kelly, they're going to continue to have to believe in them because, again, these guys are freshmen. But they played a lot of football. We'll see how they hold up against Abraderis and Nick Toon in one-on-one -on -one coverage. Now in second and 17, they go back to the gun, throwing Abraderis, the intended receiver. 
And he was well covered by Ekpre Olamu that time. We talked about the freshman. Aberderis got him earlier, but not this time. Ekpre Olamu has got to be able to run stride for stride against an outstanding route runner in Aberderis. Aberderis has had some, some games this year where he has been a difference maker for Russell Wilson. He's very sneaky for a sophomore at 6'2", 180 on how he runs his routes. And now Wisconsin's facing, obviously, a big third down, third and long here. Band members trying to stay cool. 82 degrees. Monty Ball back in. Third and a bunch. And a movement on the left side of the line by Ricky Wagner. Picked up his stance. Start. Offense, number 58. Five-yard penalty. Third down. A series to forget for the Badgers. And it all began to go downhill when Alioto, who will bring pressure from every spot on the field, was able to pour in on Russell Wilson for the first time today. Tune number one comes to the bottom of your screen. Fires incomplete. And there is a penalty flag. This time there's a penalty flag, and I believe it's going to go against the defense in the secondary. Brandon, it looked like Terrence Mitchell that time. Again, Oregon aggressive. Third and a long way to go. They blitz, and Mitchell may have locked on to the receiver that he was going up against in one-on-one -on -one coverage. Pass interference. Defense number 20. 15-yard penalty. Automatic first down. So John Boyette incurs the wrath of the official on that third and 22. And Boyette, an outstanding safety for the Ducks, but this a big mistake. Well, the I, Badgers are bailed out. To come to the defense of John Boyette, I, Boyette didn't even touch anybody there. Terrence Mitchell lined up 27 there on Nick Toon, perhaps right there. Boyette did not even come close to touching anybody, so Mitchell there definitely is involved in the interference. So on first down, they come back with White, and White hammers across midfield. Let me tell you right now, the numbers are not the easiest to see. So I'm, not, I'm with you. you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to offer them a little apology <laughs> down there I'm because you. I'm standing up here. Yeah. And they Between the helmets the and helmet. the jerseys, yeah. forget about it. If now they the get camera, half of them right The camera here. folks, you, you folks home say, what are these? I'm blind, and you can see the camera picks it up much better than we do with the naked eye. You're going to have to trust me. Yeah. That's all. You're going to have to trust throw, me. Throw the reflection in there off the helmet. <laughs> Sega down and two after the white run. Badly for the first down. Ducks trying to prevent it and could not. Uh, it, 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 the tough thing about facing this offense, and, and we should mention Paul Christ as an offensive coordinator for Wisconsin, is, is one of the top in the country. He, there he is. He took the, the, the head job at Pitt. He's tried to balance. One of these coordinators is trying to balance out. After this game, he's the head coach at Pitt. And also at the same time, showing respect to get Wisconsin and Russell Wilson ready to win this game. Up to this point, he has really done an outstanding job of prepping this offense and getting them ready to attack this defense. And it is White picking up the heavy load on this series. Or well, if it's not ball, it's White. Michael Clay with the stop for Oregon. And I guess my point about Paul Chris's system is when you have to face a balanced attack and they can be physical and they can run with those big linemen, and this year, because of Russell Wilson, not only can they play action you like they would do last year with Scott Tolzien, but they can roll out. They can run bootlegs and nakeds. He can create. It just puts it, there's a lot on the defense to try to deal with. Even though it's not a spread attack, they still are very, very versatile. Brady Ewing and Monty Ball back on that backfield. And it'll be Ball, slips a tackle and stopped at the Oregon 40-yard line, and that's going to bring up another third down, and Boyette up to make the stop. That's, that's their answer. That, they're they're going to live and die by pressure. Boyette is a safety, is number one of the team in tackles, which means they're willing to commit an eighth guy close to the line of scrimmage. When you do that, you're going to leave those young corners out there where, again, Russell Wilson will look to expose them in one-on-one -on -one coverage. But that's who Nick Aliotti is. That's what he's going to do. Both Ewing and Jacob Pedersen are fine receivers.
They're going to stick with the run, and the Ducks were not fooled. They stopped ball. Moneyball stopped on third down that time. This is a textbook tackle here by Michael Clay, the, the linebacker. Watch him fill this hole and put Monty Ball on his back and push him the other way. Outstanding technique, wraps him up, hits him low, respects his power, and brings him down. Big time play. Brad Norton, his 198th punt for the Badgers, all four years. Stopped inside the five-yard line, or right at, let's see where they finally spot it, the side judge down there. It looks like right at the five-yard line. Well, in his first season as head coach, Brady Hope has led Denard Robinson and Michigan to a BCS Bowl. Tuesday, tomorrow night, the Wolverines meet David Wilson and the Virginia Tech Hokies in the All-State Sugar Bowl on ESPN. And our coverage will begin at 8 Eastern time. So the Wolverines will try to duplicate what the Spartans did here today, winning in triple overtime in the state of Michigan. Trying to go 2-0 in their bowl games. There's Kenyon Barner now in the game for the Ducks, getting his first carry, and uh, he's out of bounds on that, on that far side. Oregon not afraid to be aggressive when they get pinned down. You and I have called enough Ducks games to realize that if they see something that they can try to be aggressive and they're not going to pull their horns in here and just say, oh, let's be careful. They'll continue to run their offense even though they're pinned back deep. And exploding into the middle is DeAnthony Thomas. Can't catch him. Touchdown, Oregon. His nickname is Black Mamba. And he has struck for 91 yards. World class speed out of Crenshaw High School right here in Los Angeles. Maldonado for the tie. So as the first quarter comes to an end, an electrifying run by DeAnthony Thomas. Henry in a foot race. Too much speed. of our three Hall of Famers moments ago and what a class gentleman Senator George Fleming who was a running back kicker kick returner punt returner defensive safety for the Washington Huskies 22 years as a state legislator the great Dick Enberg of course he broke in here in Los Angeles radio and TV voice of the California Angels and the legendary Ron Dane running back of Wisconsin two times the MVP of the Rose Bowl game. So there is your brand new class, George Fleming, Dick Enberg, and Ron Dane. And we just had a record set here, Herbie. I had forgotten. I did the last record, 88 yards, Tyrone Wheatley oh. for the Wolverines against Washington in 93, broken by that 91-yard burst. So DeAnthony Thomas goes into the record book with the longest run from scrimmage. And it is fielded on the six by Abraderis. Abraderis to the 37 yard line. This is what Wisconsin's defense has got to be concerned again. Look at the option look. And look at the linebackers, how they flow out. They're following Darren Thomas and Kenyon Barner. And on the back side, you got to be careful when they sneak in a back like DeAnthony Thomas. They hand off the ball, the linebackers get out of position. It makes it easy for Carson York and the linemen to be able to get the blocking angles. And DeAnthony Thomas sets a new Rose Bowl record with 91 yards and could potentially change the momentum of this football game depending on what happens on this series. 
And they're back with the running game on first down. Body ball. And the Ducks and Aliotti a little more aggressive up front. And I, I think they're more aggressive, maybe settling into the game, but still taking the chance by attacking that line of scrimmage. The answer from Wisconsin is first and 10, play action, rolling Russell Wilson out and still trying to attack that young secondary on early downs. Three wide here on second and nine. Complete, short of the first down is Nick Toon to the 44-yard line of the Badgers, and that will bring up one of the things that the Ducks are doing right now is they're keeping the Badgers in third down. Well, they blitzed that time Josh Cadu, who was lined up there. Pretty good effort by Nick Toon. Lost control of the ball. Still was able to hold on to that and pick up uh, some big yards there to set up this third and short. Over here comes that jumbo offensive line look. They add another 300 pounder. And they're going to play action out of it. A beautiful call, and Pedersen, the tight end, crosses the 40 to the 38 yard line. Well, of course, they're anticipating with the jumbo package, they're going to try to just churn up some yards, but I love the aggressive nature by Paul Christ. Shows play action. Monty Ball consumes most of the defense. And Pedersen, a great receiving tight end, gets just enough of an edge off Deion Jordan, who slipped at the line of scrimmage trying to stay with him. Made it pretty easy that time for Wilson. 17 yards on third and one. And now they come back with that running play to the 34-yard line. And that's a better first down run than they've had in the last couple of series. Stuckey making the stop. Nice balanced attack here by by Wilson and the Badgers. I love how calm Russell Wilson is. I just love his Isn't demeanor. Calm, though? I mean, you, you know, he played in minor league baseball, drafted in the fourth round by the Rockies. Just has a, a certain demeanor about him, a certain awareness about him that I think this team really has fed off of this year. He was fabulous at the luncheon yesterday. He interviewed a couple of his teammates, and he did such a good job. Second down, Wilson. Drops it off, wide open in underneath. And that's Toon again, and it's hard to believe that he was that wide open, and they've got a first down at the 16-yard line. Well, Kiki Alonso, I think, this time broke coverage. He comes up through there blitzing, and I think he probably should have been able to sit back there. He was hesitant, that's the only reason I question if he should have been able to come through. Left it wide open underneath for Nick Toon with Alonzo coming there. And again, Russell Wilson with the vision downfield finds his open man for that easy first down. Back in the red zone where the Badgers have been lethal this year. Rolling. Still to the right. And he'll hook it out of bounds and be careful over there. Did a penalty flag come yes, flying? Sir. Yes, it did. Oh, there's, there's the mobility coming to play again. After the play, personal foul, late head out of bounds, number 20, defense. Half the distance to the goal, automatic first down. And that's John Boyette, and uh, this time, was he mixed up in it, Herbie? Yeah, Boyette was up there. He had Tony Jackson also involved. He's clearly out of bounds. Cannot lower your head. On especially a quarterback when he's three yards out of bounds easy call for the officials but they had the play covered it was a great job by Oregon's defense on a rollout they had everything covered and the mobility again is a difference there by Russell Wilson to keep that play alive ball twists his way to the four-yard line How about this Wisconsin offense? Not only have they had so much success inside the red zone, when they're facing first and goal this year, they've not been denied. 44 for 44 when they're facing a first and goal situation. Brian Wozniak, a sophomore tight end from Ohio, has checked in. Down. 
deep ball again. That is his second. And that should give him the record, if I recall. That was his first tie is the record. Okay. So it ties the record of Barry Sanders. The 39th total touchdown. What a year. Here the coach said he took an extra half a second. They like that. They like that patience back there. Let the play develop. And the extra point is added by Philip Welsh. A couple of history making runs here. First Thomas and now Marty Ball. The Badgers in their white jerseys are completely in the shade on their sideline. Swing across right now to the darker jerseys, and the Ducks, for the time being, remain in the California sunshine. 21 14, the Badgers lead it. 10 52 remaining here in the first half. from the end zone is that man again DeAnthony Thomas left side shakes a tackle out near midfield Finellis starting corner finally got him out of bounds and Monty Ball from Wisconsin nominee for the AT&T All-American Player of the Year text vote to 55862 from your mobile phone 55862 and you can earn a chance for the trip to the national championship a week from today down New Orleans way. What a weekend coming up in New Orleans. And there is Monty Ball thanking the big fellas up front. Kenyon Barner is now in as running back after that 46 yard return. Darren Thomas going to go deep. Got a man open on that far side. And just like that Kenyon Barner scores on a 54 yard pass from Darren Thomas. That's the good news for the Ducks. The bad news is defense get ready. <laughs> Brent catch your breath and get your oxygen tank. It's going to be a long game here. How about this Kenyon Barner out of the backfield sliding him out and it's just an attacking mindset. Darren Thomas shows the patient to let the play develop. Barner was wide open from the time he left the backfield. He let him get about 20 yards downfield until he just feathered that ball down in there. Now Donato tacks it on. 42 points so far in the first half. Coverage of the game and coverage for your auto home, life, and business. 21 21, Big Ten, Pac 12, Wisconsin, Oregon, 98th Rose Bowl from Pasadena, California. And that was a story on the last series as the Badgers did not come away with points after they were in to the red zone. And again, Darren Thomas to Huff on that first down pass. And so Thomas. Starting to loosen up a little bit here, Herbie, with the pass. Aaron Andrews telling us during one of the breaks that Chip Kelly really challenging Oregon that got to really create some tempo here. Let's try to get Wisconsin. They're reeling a bit. Let's try to go after them while they're on their heels. Thomas fires high and incomplete. He had his man open that time. I think the, the tough part for Wisconsin and what they're dealing with, people talked a lot about teams having extra time to prepare to be able to slow down Oregon's offense. It's one thing to have time, but you really need a defensive line to be an equalizer, and so far that's not happening in this game. The Badgers are, I should say the Ducks are one of two. One of two with third down. And now they are two of three on that first down pass to the 35 yard line DeAnthony Thomas and he was hit by Cromartie Marcus Cromartie 
Huge cushion off to the left-hand side here. Look how deep the safety is in this case. He's way back respecting the speed of Oregon, but it's third down and made an easy throw that time for Thomas. Now off a of play action. Almost intercepted. Huff was the intended receiver, and he's down, folks. Slow to get up. Bounces back now. Darren Thomas. No, Thomas. wait a minute. Yeah. All right. So that's Josh Huff, the sophomore from Houston. Still a little woozy. So we'll take a break with 4.05 remaining here in the first half. And the Badgers and the Ducks deadlocked at 21. folks and we will show you why number one going down and watch the defensive back come up on it Aaron. up high Aaron Henry with a collision that has Huff on the sideline and the Ducks come back with a running play to the 40 yard line that was a second down and we'll keep an eye on Josh Huff but a significant part of this offense along with DeAnthony Thomas and two and a Gives him three great weapons on the perimeter to complement what Darren Thomas and Michael James and Kenyon Barner do. The Ducks spread the field. Hit. Fumble. Picked up on the bounce. Touchdown. Nizegwu. Lewis Nizegwu. From Plotville, Wisconsin. Mike Taylor comes free, confusion up front, good job of disguising it. The question is, is his arm coming forward before the ball came out? I'm sure the officials will take another look at this. It's such a big play, but Taylor comes free, and I don't think Darren Thomas felt him at all. He knocks that football loose. So instant replay and stop to take a, another look at it, and the question will be the action of the right arm. I'm not sure that he was coming forward, Herbie. I thought that as we took a look at that play, it looked to me like the arm was still cocked. Now, instant replay will take another look at it. It's all about where the football is. There's a touchdown call. There was no question. And the ACC officiating crew was all over it. Well, Brent, as you said, it's all about is the hand coming forward and the arm coming forward at all before the ball comes out. Not only do they make the call right, but they make it quickly. And the extra point is tacked on. Our first defensive touchdown. 49 points, 326 still to go in the first half. Well, the sun beginning to set here in Southern California as you see our view from the DirecTV Ultimate Picture Cam. This crowd, Pasadena being treated to a wild and woolly Rose Bowl game here in number 98. Just had our first defensive touchdown total of 49 points put up by the Badgers and the Ducks. Second half of course will be in the shade with the lights on. Jackson the Anthony Thomas so Huff remains out of this game after that blistering hit that he took. And here is Thomas coming out for the 5, 10. And Thomas 
slammed down at the 12 yard line. Let's take a look at our Taco Bell touchdown spotlight from the previous play for the Badgers defense. See that Borland's walked up at middle linebacker. I think there's some confusion on the left side of the Oregon offensive line. By walking up, by walking up Borland, I think there's some confusion on this side because eventually Taylor comes free. Watch Weems, the left tackle, go to the outside. He picks up his man, but to the inside, you have two Oregon offensive linemen blocking one man. The linebacker comes free. Confusion on the left side creates the turnover. And the Ducks come back with Michael James battling his way, 30-35. And Taylor on the play again. What a linebacker number 53 is, a Wisconsin youngster, only a junior on the season, 137 tackles, eight of them for a loss, and he also had two interceptions. Uh, Taylor and Borland will not give up on a play, and that was a good effort to get downfield, but again, the issue and the challenge for Taylor and Borland against this speed is how will they play out in space trying to slow down Michael James and Kenyon Barner. Darren Thomas, Paulson, the tight end, makes his first catch of the game. That's David Paulson, the senior from Auburn, Washington. Everything comes off the play action in the passing game. Freeze the linebackers, make them have to respect the speed of Barner, and then quickly get the ball out to Paulson, a veteran who's got sure hands and picks up big yards. 249, 247, that's an eternity for the Ducks. Down by seven. Come right on back with a running play. Gaining a yard or so. That was Barner who had checked back in, of course. He scored a touchdown on a reception. So already, Herbie, we've had the most points in the first half of a Rose Bowl game. 49. Previous record, the Badgers were involved in that. 24-21 over UCLA back in 99. The Michael James gets the call. Tries to get that left edge. But they just put so much on Taylor and Borland. The eye discipline, the challenging them just to, to be able to stay disciplined with not just being in the right place, but you have to be able to make a quick decision on are they running the football? Is it a play action? And if you don't make a quick decision, they're by you. Sometimes you make a quick decision and it's wrong. They're taxing these linebackers. Fake to Barner. Throw. Complete to the 16-yard line, 2 and A. Great kick! Here it is again. Linebackers have to come up and respect this running game. They come up and realize, okay, I, now i got to get back in coverage. It's a good throw that time. Two receivers crossing. He makes a quick throw and a quick decision that time to get it to 2 and A. Here comes the jet sweep. They're going to throw off of it. They're going to throw back with Bennett, the backup quarterback. They worked on this all week to Darren Thomas. And Darren Thomas is across the 10-yard line. And he, he Brian <laughs> Bennett slipped into the game. He's a redshirt freshman from Encino, California. And watching Bennett all week, you know, they, there are opportunities for trick plays, and Bennett doesn't get a lot of chances unless Darren Thomas goes down with an injury. He was so excited to throw that, jumping up and down, hoping that Thomas would find the end zone. Second down <laughs> and two. Here's Barner. Kenyon picks up the first down. It'll be first and goal. Taylor in on still another stop. This clock is down close to a minute. Remember, Wisconsin won the toss and elected to take the football, so Oregon will get the ball to start the second half. That's Barner coming to the back of the field, and there's a penalty flag false start. That'll cost him five. That Carson York, the left guard, moved. So back they go to the seven. False start. Offense, number 61, five-yard penalty, first down. Coming up on the Buick Halftime Report, Chris Lee and Desmond will break down the first half, and we'll hear from both marching bands. Part of the pageantry here at the Rose Bowl. The bands, of course, marched earlier this morning in the parade. off and nothing doing. Michael could not find a big enough hole. Final minute. 
Second down and goal. Most most offenses are panicking and thinking about their timeouts. Oregon just kind of letting that clock work down. Darren keeps it himself. And he's a now couple yards shy. And now they'll burn one with third and goal coming up. Timeout. Remember Oregon. the USC game That's that you and I had timeout towards the end. And 30 second timeout. Yeah, the Oregon offense kind of just taking their time and not necessarily using their timeouts and just kind of easing their way down. And it ended up backfiring in that case. I was asked about that. And I said, well, they don't have a lot of experience in close games coming down this stretch. Uh, you get a little upset with the coach about time management, but they haven't gone through this very often. No, they really, they're used to always being up and mm -hmm. just putting a, the, the kind of the foot on the accelerator. This is an interesting game because it's taking Oregon out of their comfort zone and making them have to continue to attack. And I think it affects their defense and their offense. Give Wisconsin a lot of credit. They came into this game, everybody talking about how would Wisconsin's defense handle the heat? How would Wisconsin deal with the, the month layoff and dealing with the speed of Oregon? In the first half, we've seen some big plays, but they, they're playing very well. Let me add one thing. Except for two completed passes, the Badgers may be waiting for us in New Orleans. Yeah. That Hail Mary against nope. Michigan State, and then your alma mater, Ohio no. State. Those two plays no are question. preventing the Badgers no from question. playing for the title. Third down and goal. And it'll be Darren Thomas firing to the end zone. Touchdown, two and a. Waited for the headlinesman. He was very patient with the call, making sure that two and a had possession in his judgment. It's matched up with Marcus Cromarty, who's a physical corner to timing, a little inside and back to the outside. See, so make sure that he holds on to the football. Great view of it right here. Has the ball ever touched the surface? Well, it's tough to see there, but the official right on top of it. That was a great reverse angle. And they will they will take a look at that. You couldn't ask for a better view of a touchdown on a reverse angle right here. And that, of course, from behind. And then it is knocked free. Here's your reverse angle. Watching, watching, look at the headlinesman. Watching every step of the way. Arms still not up in the air, signaling touchdown. Then it was knocked out on the roll. Yeah, by the time the play was over, Cromarty not giving up on it eventually knocks it away from, from two and a. The tough thing to overturn this is when it looks like potentially may have touched the surface, it's when both of their bodies are laying on top of the ball. And they're gonna No question. That was a touchdown. Well, that drive took an eternity, two minutes and 56 <laughs> seconds. <laughs> so this is the fourth time, if we make this extra point here, that we will have been tied. And Maldonado makes it a 28 all and this could be a long afternoon for the duck with those push-ups after each Oregon score that was 10 plays and 87 yards as I said two minutes 56 seconds really nice job of mixing up the, the uh, play calling some perimeter running game play action to challenge those linebackers and their eye discipline a little razzle dazzle with a backup quarterback sneaking in and throwing the ball back to Thomas and then eventually a little play action again and finding two and a ball thrown low and away where two and a can get his hands on the ball and secure it for the touchdown. What a first half. <laughs> We've had the longest run from scrimmage by DeAnthony Thomas. We've had Monty Ball tie Barry Sanders with that one touchdown that he pounded in. We've had a record number of points scored in the first half of a Rose Bowl. It is just absolutely remarkable what's occurring here this afternoon in Pasadena and this is just the beginning folks this is a good doubleheader today I want to tell you that that second game between Oklahoma State and Stanford that too is going to be a good football game down in the desert it'll be a great game and just seeing Andrew Luck playing his last game his offense is healthy and Brandon Whedon and Justin Blackman and so many playmakers from Oklahoma State that one could be a shootout and much like this 
You know, I know we have talked about uh, Baylor and Washington, but we may be giving new meaning for remember the Alamo right here. <laughs> Thank you, George Hill. <laughs> Here's the low bouncing kickoff fielded on the 11. Abraderis. Now to the 34 yard line. Well, we mentioned New Orleans, folks, and what a week. The Saints will be playing Saturday against the Lions, and Monday night you'll be with us, 8 p.m. Eastern, LSU and Alabama. It was so good the first time. Let's do it one more time. <laughs> I know I've just incurred the wrath of some of my Oklahoma State fans, but folks, that's going to be a tough, tough football game between two very talented teams next Monday night. Wisconsin, LSU and Alabama. Wisconsin three timeouts, looking to try to get a field goal here before the half. And they hit two to start the series, Herbie. He'll be the, and he's out of bounds, boy, yet. Brett Bielma has a, a personality and a reputation of when he gets near the end of the half, he wants to always try to get points. And in a game like this, that's not going to change. Now, the, the, look at the game clock is moving. That's, I, think he, I think Wisconsin thought that he got out of bounds. I thought he got out of bounds. Yeah. Now they, they burn a timeout, and you know, Bielman's going to ask. Yeah, he, he thought he was, Nick Toon was way out of bounds. Why did the clock keep moving? I mean, he, am I missing Clearly something? out of bounds. He's out of, out of bounds. And it, shouldn't there be about the clock right 20, there? And, 23 uh, or now four. they're going to come over and explain to Coach Bielman, the referee, He's coming over. This has been a very well... Now watch the clock on the upper right. Okay, there, there should be 19 seconds left here, or according to what we saw, unless they restarted it for some reason. Now the, the official up here with us saying that because he was knocked backwards and out of bounds, that that's why they did not stop the clock. Nice of the ACC because they're right on top of it, and that's exactly why they didn't stop it. So interesting. It is. And interesting. Brett Bielema, along with you and I, you learned something. To me, he looked like he was out of bounds. Interesting. And it also killed their chances here, getting a field goal at the end of the half. Draw play. And he'll be content to go in with the tie. The most points ever in the first half of a Rose Bowl game. 56. You all come on back for the second half. It's going to be real entertaining. Hi, Vizio. Well, we have watched the highest scoring first half in Rose Bowl history. Deadlocked at 28. And, Herbie, let's take a look at our coaching adjustments brought to you by Home Depot. Well, let's start with Oregon and Wisconsin's defense. Their eyes have been locked in on LaMichael James. And one of the things that Oregon's tried to take advantage of is play action and trying to maybe use LaMichael James as a decoy or Kenyon Barner here. They got it to DeAnthony Thomas on a run. Here, a play action. Again, they're locked in on the backfield of Darren Thomas and LaMichael James. This time, they get it downfield to Kenyon Barner. And on the other side of the football, one of the things that you see is Darren Thomas's ability to make plays by attacking Russell Wilson's uh, defense and the Badgers' defense. So Chip Kelly and the Ducks have run 29 plays, and they have 28 points. As we come to the second half, and uh, welcome back, everybody. Thanks for being with us in what figures to be really an exciting second half. Well, I, I think you start thinking about what can these defenses do? Uh, one thing Wisconsin has got to do because there's such an advantage for Oregon and their speed is they've got to take chances. They did that and however it backfired on them. But if you're Wisconsin, you keep dictating your own defense based on how well your own offense is doing. The adjustments for Bielema, Coach Bielema has to be, let's continue to attack, hope we create some turnovers and get the ball back to Russell Wilson. And what do you do if you're Oregon? You're being pounded, they're running the football, they're throwing, they've got a very, very balanced attack right now facing Chip Kelly. Again, I think you have to err on the side of being overly aggressive. When things are going downhill like this, you gotta do something to turn things around. 
fielded at the five yard line. And DeAnthony stopped at the 22 yard line and that was Chris Borland, the starting linebacker who cleaned up on him. And let's go down below to Aaron Andrews. Brian, I had a chance to talk to Chip Kelly coming out of the half. He did tell me Josh Huff is good to go after having his bell rung in the first half of this game. Also interesting in talking to assistant coach John Neal works with the secondary. He said it's gone the way he thought it would go. He said this Badgers team playing exactly like he studied on film. It's really going to come down to which defense can make the last play. So Aaron, the entire field now is in the shadows as Knight will begin to send and Michael James opens up here before Cromartie can get him out of bounds and he runs it up there near that first down marker you can see the sellout crowd the panorama as you look down on the granddaddy of them all second down and one the Michael on a slant, slips free of Taylor for a first down. Young man who probably has a future as a third down back in the National Football League, Michael James, and he's going to surprise the big fellas with his strength on You're third down. Exactly right. He's got great hands to catch the ball to the backfield, strong lower body, can get through tackles as he did there. And that's DeAnthony coming around, got the handoff on that jet sweep. Looking for the sideline, and he's got it again. One man. Henry can't get there. That's his second touchdown. Already he's got the record with a 91-yarder from scrimmage. And now on the jet sweep, a 64-yarder. Honey Badger will be looking for him. <laughs> Honey Badger don't care. Oh, man. <laughs> I mean, Black Mamba is something. Trying to make a Heisman campaign already for 2012. <laughs> looking into next year. Oh, my. <laughs> Can this kid go? You don't want to give him the corner. This just in coaching adjustment. Don't give Black Mamba the edge. Two rushes, 155 yards, and two touchdowns for DeAnthony Thomas. The Ducks, folks, have run 32 plays for 35 points. They have nine minutes and 29 seconds total of possession. And they lead this Rose Bowl 35-28, and now it's Badger's turn. Come on out, Russell Wilson. <laughs> Aberderas awaits the kickoff. We'll field this one at the four. Gets an alley. Out of bounds at the 36 yard line. So Aberderis is stopped by Hill, but a 59 yard return. Well, he's been doing this all year for Wisconsin. And just what Russell Wilson needs. Great field position, a nice job by the entire return unit. And I'll tell you, Aberderis, when he gets to the outside, he will surprise you with his quickness. Troy Hill able to push him out of bounds. So now the Badgers will see if they can attack for the tying touchdown. Honey Ball is the running back. That power look with the two tight ends. And here he comes. Got a hole. Let's sneak in a highlight of the last touchdown before we get another touchdown. Great run by DeAnthony Thomas. Good job of sealing the edge. But watch LaMichael James, the all-star hot shot tailback. Great effort right there to knock down Marcus Cromarty to open it up to the outside and give DeAnthony Thomas more room to the sideline to eventually get all the way to the end zone. Let's see if Paul Christ goes back to the well for the play action on this second and one. Or continues to hammer this time. 
Little draw play, and ball is cut off. Aliotti's defense got to the left side, and nothing doing with Boyette from Napa, California, making the stop. That's what Oregon's going to have to do is take some chances and gamble a bit by just attacking that line of scrimmage with Boyette and Eddie Pleasant, the other safety. That time they were able to get penetration. Deion Jordan along in there as well. Ball, middle, over the top to the 13-yard line. Good old-fashioned Wisconsin football. Third and short, the power game. Pull the big guard, Travis Frederick, around. And up and over that time for Monty Ball. Who does he think he is? Simpson of the Bengals? <laughs> whoa. Yeah, whoa you got to get over that helmet. Yeah. Yeah. That <laughs> shiny helmet, whoa. you got to clear. Stay clear of that, boys. Hello. A little higher. First down and 10. Hello. Check back over the sideline. We got Brett. timeout. Red Bielema. Wisconsin. Full sprint. Their all first the way down to the 15-yard line. Get his timeout. There's in. a media timeout on the field. Got his so cardio in for the day. <laughs> got his cardio in. <laughs> <laughs> Delivering entertainment freedom for all. Taco Bell, think outside the bun. Genworth, take a step every day to keep your promises. And AT&T, an official sponsor of the Bowl Championship Series. Well, there's a National Historic Landmark, the Gamble House in Pasadena, designed back in 1908 for David and Mary Gamble of the Procter & Gamble Company. The Badgers after the timeout with a first and ten just inside the Ducks 15 yard line. Ball picks his way behind the right side of that huge offensive line. Zeitler and Oglesby. Michael Clay with the stop for the Ducks. Talked a lot about the success that Wisconsin has down in the red zone. And I think it's a couple th things their ability to be physical and run the football but having a veteran quarterback that makes good decisions with the play action pass his mobility is kind of that x factor down in this area if things are covered he can create so they can do a lot of different things down in this area for a defense to have to deal with russell wilson did score a touchdown running in the first half but after that the ducks a little bit tougher on his running game and bell slip ball slips at the 12 yard line and that's going to bring up the third down. And we'll see if Paul Chris the offensive coordinator is headed to Pittsburgh as their head coach after this game just dials up a little shotgun pass here. Well it, it, you got to you got to think that Oregon's going to come with pressure here on third down. Not you don't want to give Russell Wilson time to sit back there whether he's rolling out or sitting in a pocket. See if Nick Aliotti gets creative with his pressure package here. And there is Russell back in the gun. He has to throw it away. Nick Toon was double covered. Boyette, the safety, had rotated over to help the corner. And here comes the field goal unit for the Badgers. And they brought both their outside linebackers that time. Lacombo actually got to Russell Wilson to make him have to get rid of that football before he had a chance to let the play develop. So Philip Welsh, who is four of five this year, he has had one blocked in the course of the season. His holder is the punter, Brad Norton. And he tacks on three. Thirty-five, thirty-one, Oregon leads. Southern California. And that's a story, the fact that the Badgers were held to a field goal. 
And the return men for the Ducks have moved up to about the 14 yard line now. DeAnthony Thomas, along with Brian Jackson. Remember, Josh Huff took a big blow in the first half. Otherwise, he'd have been back here with DeAnthony. Drilling one to DeAnthony. One yard. He's on that line. No, they said they said he downed it in the end zone in time. I thought he was very close to coming out. And wherever that ball is, it's not the foot, it's the football. Right. Oh, that's close. The linesman is right there. Ball has to be all the way across the line. So it's, you see and it his was foot. not all the way. Now the fans are reacting because of his foot, but again, it's the football coming all the way across the line, which it did not do. Right call on the field. And on first down, the Ducks' run game from the 20 is stuffed. Fans are still upset by Brett, that call. Borland makes the stop. Looked like Brett Bielema maybe tried to get the officials' attention, and I don't know if he called a timeout to try to have this reviewed or not, but the official from his sideline came running in. Timeout. Wisconsin. Yeah, I think he wants to second have this. Charles timeout. That's not a good time to burn a second timeout. Not in this kind of game. We've already had a snap. Yeah. The rule book's a rule book. <laughs> right. That's pretty clear. It was ruled down in the end zone because the entire ball it's did not, not come out. It's not the foot. It's the entire football coming across. And that entire football clearly is not out. Right. So there's the call He's finally right made. Now, the line judge was watching. He was right on top of it. And now the Badgers have burned two of their three timeouts. Not a good idea here. But we've already had a snap and a play after that. So the replay booth is even sending down word that that's not a play they review. So he can he get his timeout back if that, this is not a, a play that can be reviewed? If his intent to call the timeout was to have it reviewed, you would think he would get the timeout back. So we need to find out if he gets that timeout back. So it's a first down and 10. But it should be second down as the run was stopped earlier. And Borland makes a stop. Unless the whistle blew when Bielma was out on the field. And I think that's what happened down there is that when Bielman was raising a, a ruckus, they did get it stopped before that first snap. Yeah. And then he was informed sure. that the replay booth can't turn that over. But the timeout will not be given back to Bielma. So he's down to one timeout now. And it is second down and seven. Well, Michael James forced out of bounds at the 25 yard line southward I hate to keep beating this this point up but I really wonder if the, the reaction from the crowd here in the stadium by looking at the replay booth maybe forced his hand a bit to try to get the timeout and try to get the potential review maybe the crowd had an impact there on on Brett Bielma trying to get that timeout I'm assuming that they saw the replay right absolutely they, they, they saw it on the big screen and now trying to set a screen and there was no screen for the receiver he was naked to the world and Bo Allen makes a stop and the Ducks are forced to punt alert sports center we got to stop here and a punter we got a, a punter on the field good job they sat back in zone this time and Shelton Johnson was involved just sitting right there read the play perfectly and they were able to corral that time James and that speed of Oregon. So here's Rice and a beautiful high punt. Aberderis still thinks he's got time. From the 27, slips the tackle, cuts to the left, and brought down at the 37 yard line. So good coverage. 
Averdeer is dangerous on the return. Badgers have got the ball back. They trail it by four. So the Badgers get it back, and uh, Herbie, I want to raise the point that when Bielma stopped things and everything kind of shut down, the Ducks were slowed down as they were coming up to the line of scrimmage, and you know how quickly they like to do things. Yeah. Burns a timeout and a little discussion down on the field, but they came back and they couldn't get a first down, and now Bielma's team has got the ball back, and we'll see what they can do with it. Here's ball. Let me check that. That's James White who had replaced him. I think a lot of the confusion for fans here in the stadium and maybe fans at home is the, his foot touches the line. But the ball does not cross the line. The entire football has to be across. You can see clearly half the football is, but it's not all the way across. So it's the right call on the field. And we've got an injured Oregon player and down on the field. Hamuli from Utah was uh, shaken up. So he's receiving attention. He'll come off to the sideline. So, Herbie, uh, the Badgers had to settle for a field goal last time they had the ball. Now, the Ducks couldn't even get a first down. They punted back. And uh, we'll see what uh, transpires the game. A couple of things are factors. You know, everybody wanted to say, oh, these big 300-pound linemen of Wisconsin, they're going to wear down in the heat and everything. Mm -hmm. Well, there's not a lot of heat right now in the second no. half of this game. And also, the commercial breaks that we have in this game, Good along point. with other things, yeah. it gives them kind of a chance to catch their breath. And, you know, I know some people that I've heard on TV say that these fellows of the Badgers are all overweight. You know, I, I've been to practice watching them. And they're in pretty good shape, this bunch. They are in great shape, and also they're rotating a lot of bodies to try to stay fresh and, and try to be able to hold up. Uh, so Mooley right here, right in the middle of that play, and always dangerous when you see linemen roll on top of the back of a leg. Let's hope that he's okay and able to return. But I think the big thing here for, for Oregon's defense as they continue to try to contain Russell Wilson is when Wisconsin has been able to run up into the teeth of the Oregon defense. That's where they've had a lot of success with that power running game, and that's where they've been able to set up their play action pass off of that. Second down and six. They stick with White. First down at midfield. And that's exactly it right there. They, they're just coming right off of the football, and it's power against power, and who can create a crease? And it's Wisconsin's offensive line getting the push. Nice combination block. Josh Oglesby, the right tackle, who battled through six knee surgeries. Last year, he was sitting on the sidelines watching this Rose Bowl game, and very painful thing for him. Tonight, he's actually out there playing. Monty Ball watching from the sidelines. He has 146 yards, white 29. Didn't like what he saw with Toon, so Russell Wilson is going to keep it himself and step out of bounds after a couple of yards. Looked like he wanted to go to Toon, and he didn't like what he saw. Well, it was a running play, and he wanted to come off of it, board it, and just throw the football out there to the outside. A little bit of a mix-up. This is something new this, this week for this game that Russell Wilson has is the check with me at the line of scrimmage. Here a little stiff arm for the middle linebacker, Stuckey. But that time, not quite on the same page with his wide receivers, and he didn't have anything to do with it, but at least he got a couple yards out of the play. Second down and eight. Breaking a tackle is White. Lucky to get back to the line of scrimmage that time. Alonzo. That was a big, big hit there at the line of scrimmage. And James White saying, I know Monty Ball is the physical guy, but I could keep my legs moving and bounce off of defenders as well. This time he'll check out of the game. And another big third down for Wisconsin. Yeah, Lacombo blew the play up. Now ball is back. Got the snap. Pressure. On the move. Going to keep it. Can he get the first down? Yes. 
to the 30 yard line. A powerful run with Eddie Pleasant bringing him down. Here's the X factor in this game for Wisconsin's offense. Third down and long. You have things covered downfield, and here comes Russell Wilson. Gets to the outside, gets wide of Taylor Hart, and then is able to you see his vision. He's downfield. He wants to be able to throw the ball, but once he gets outside of Hart, he has the first down and a good effort by Pedersen downfield blocking. Now White checks back in. That was 17 yards on third and eight. And White is stopped at the line by Hart. Coach is telling us that from the time they played against LSU in Dallas, where they lost a lot of veterans from last year's defense, the player that maybe has improved the most is Taylor Hart. Sophomore, 6'6", 283 pounds, long arms, very, very strong, but the year of experience helped him really to come into his own and take over for Brandon Banger on the inside there. He's had an outstanding year as a first-year starter. Here comes a blitz by the linebackers. Complete. And that's Ewing's first catch of the game. And well short of a first down. For years, Wisconsin has had not just one tight end, but a couple of tight ends that can be a threat as a receiver. This year, they just have Jacob Pedersen. How about that quick throw? He, he hesitated and got it out there, but they don't have the tight end. So Ewing and Monty Ball and James White have had to pick up the slack that time. This undersized fullback, who's known as a blocker, makes a pretty good catch out there in the right flat. Here's Wilson firing for the first down into the red zone. And that's Monty Ball slipping out. And Derby, you said he was a good receiver, and he does a good job. Yeah, he, he had 20 receptions coming into the year. He's known as a power runner, but he's out there isolated against Michael Clay. A good move back to the inside, and the ball is thrown down low, where it gives Monty Ball a chance to secure the football and keep it away from Michael Clay. That's a big-time play there for the Badgers to keep this drive alive and get into the red zone. Badgers are at the Ducks' 18-yard line. Going to throw on first down, corner of the end zone, tune, the official goes down, touchdown. An 18-yard strike from Russell Wilson to Nick Toon. Second touchdown pass of the game for Wilson. Brent, did you see the football halfway in the air by the time Nick Toon turned around to make a play on it? By the time he adjusted the route to the outside, the ball was already delivered by the quarterback, Russell Wilson. Great timing and rhythm that time between Wilson and Nick Toon for the touchdown. So one thing came out of that confusion and that timeout. It took the Ducks out of the rhythm. The Badgers got the ball back. They come down and strike and now lead it 38-35. Russell Wilson on first and 10 keeps the safeties over. He kind of has his eyes off to the left, but still has a chance to be able to deliver that football in the air over top of the linebackers. And before the corner could actually make a play on it, the ball is thrown away from him. Nick Toon secures that for a big touchdown for Wisconsin. Career year with the Badgers after transferring from North Carolina State. And what a difference he has made as the quarterback this year at Wisconsin. He's been absolutely lethal in the red zone all season long. There are the numbers for the day. He has also rushed for a touchdown back in the first half. See him raise his arms after that touchdown almost. As if saying, this journey is not yet quite complete. And there's a fellow who'll have something to say about it. <laughs> That's right. See if they can restart the engine to that offense. Just a wonderful, wonderful scene here in Pasadena. The 98th Rose Bowl. This one presented by Vizio. 
Badger faithful here enjoying this 80 degree weather. And now Bucky joins in. Gotta get a little deeper on those pitches. <laughs> the Duck has had a lot more practice <laughs> through the years. <laughs> a for effort. There you go, Duck. <laughs> Here we go. There's DeAnthony Thomas, and this time he does not hesitate. He comes out. And he is down at the 24 yard line. I remind you that on Wednesday, Clemson will make its first Discover Orange Bowl appearance in 30 years. When they take on a West Virginia Mountaineers team that won the final three games of the season to secure a BCS Bowl bid. The Discover Orange Bowl on ESPN. Coverage begins at 8 Eastern. It's a sneaky good game. So much talk about this matchup and the game to follow us tonight with Oklahoma State and Stanford and even Michigan and Virginia Tech and obviously the national title. But that Orange Bowl has two great quarterbacks. Should be a good one. Well, Michael James play action Darren Thomas down the middle of the field what a great grab to an a with a big time grab at the 40 yard line and the Ducks are back in business well, here's the view from our direct TV ultimate picture cam Brent you hit it play action as they've done all night he patiently waits for to a to get down further that is a great catch by two and a and he waited until the last split second to get his hands up so Cromartie couldn't realize the football was coming in to be able to knock it away and then they come back with the running play and LaMichael slips free got a first down spins to the 25 yard line southward with the stop for the Badgers well, he, he has the acceleration the lateral quickness but he also can pull defenders with him he's not a little back that you're just going to be able to push down with an arm tackle you better be able to wrap him up if you want to slow down LaMichael James Darren Thomas rolling hard to the right, and he is cut down. That was Chris Borland, one of the outstanding linebackers on this Badger team. Borland and Mike Taylor are as good a pair as existed in the Big Ten this year. What Patrick Butch from that but from that time take that play away? He wanted to use a, a shovel pass and knock it, and just throw it underneath. But the recognition by the Wisconsin defense, they took Michael James away from him. He didn't have anything to do other than just try to pick up some yards. Second and 12. They bring the Anthony around, looking for the edge. There's a penalty flag. Taylor gets him out of bounds, and there is a penalty flag on the play. I think this is a play they scored a touchdown on, and this time Ryan Clanton trying to get to the outside to seal the edge, locked up with Brandon Kelly. So it's going to be, yeah, they're going to they're going to get him. This is the play they scored a touchdown on. This one, this time Wisconsin's defense said that you're not getting outside. Holding, Holding. offense number 60, 10 yard penalty, second down. Just locks on there to Kelly and takes him down. Put him on defense. He's a pretty good tackle. It was. So Kenyon Barner comes in on this second and 22 for Oregon. I want to throw that slip screen to an A. And the Badgers force him out of bounds on that far side. Aaron Henry, that tough safety there with Shelton Johnson. Now comes a big third down. The Ducks at least want to get back into field goal range here for Maldonado. Maldonado does not have great length. At least he hasn't demonstrated it yet. So here's third down and 18. From the middle, deflected, intercepted. Henry's got it at the 20. A penalty flag down at the 25-yard line. So coming up with it is co-captain Aaron Henry from Florida. He's a fifth-year senior and one of the best safeties in the Big Ten, and unfortunately, one of the Ducks is down. And that appears to be Carson York. 
And uh, there's some problems setting in with this offensive line. Well, Darren Thomas has been high on a number Following of throws. When he's missed, he's missed high. The problem is, over the middle, when you miss high, balls are deflected and safeties are waiting. This is high and behind DeAnthony Thomas, and Henry is just sitting there in zone. Easy interception, and he gets some yards on the return. And there's an illegal block right there in the back, so this will cost the Badgers some yardage however they will have the football it's going to be spotted at the 16 yard line you saw York make the tackle and there was such impact there on the tackle that he's down and it looked like he was low holding his leg one and, and boy, he, I mean he made a big hit on the play but he is down and still down after the tackle you know, Darren Thomas has played a great game tonight. I mean, they're putting big points up. But when he's missed, he's missed high. When you miss high over the middle, that's going to be a big problem. And that, that's where York went down as he brought Henry down after the interception. So, Herbie, I, as uh, the young man's being tended to, and let's hope he's okay and uh, able, able to return, you know, we've got two uh, sets of special uniforms here for the game you know this this designed by adidas the rose petal uniform they're calling it for the badgers and of course in the over on the oregon side we have the uniform designed by nike the riddell helmet and i i wonder what the folks think which which uniform do they like the best huh maybe espn.com <laughs> you put that up polar. online <laughs> <laughs> we'll be right back from the number one Vizio. It's Wisconsin representing the Big Ten and Oregon, the Pac-12. And in the first half, the highest scoring first half in Rose Bowl game history. Right now, the Badgers with a three-point lead and 240 to go in the third quarter. And with Kirk Herbstreet and Aaron Andrews, I'm Brent Musburger as you look down at one of the great scenes in all of sport. Pasadena on New Year's Day, or as the case might be this year, on January 2nd. Unfortunately, the offensive lineman Carson York is still down as they're tending to that knee. So this is going to leave a big gaping hole over there on the left side of that offensive line. Well, as you take a look at the Comparison, and of course, Darren Thomas with that one interception here has given the ball back. Wisconsin has thrived on turnover margin all year. In fact, they came into this game fourth in the country in turnover margin with their plus 16. They've created the two turnovers, they don't have any turnovers at all. And Russell Wilson on the year, only three interceptions. It's a, a big reason why the Badgers have had such a consistent year offensively. Well, Herbie, this has been uh, just a great season for both of these teams. When we think about both of them, though, how badly they want to win this particular bowl game, simply because the Oregon Ducks beaten for the national championship and lost the Rose Bowl the previous year. Last year, the Badgers lose the Rose Bowl. So both these teams came in here looking for a W. Yeah, both of them want to have success. It's one thing to have a great regular season, you, you, but you want to finish it off by not just getting to a BCS Bowl game, but winning it. But Chip Kelly has been a head coach for three years in Eugene. Gets to a Rose Bowl, loses to Ohio State. Plays Auburn close, loses the national title. Now here he is again third straight year they've won a Pac-10 Pac slash Pac-12 championship. He's back in in a great game again in a BCS Bowl game. And for Brett Bielema in Wisconsin, boy, they I think the, the greatest thing that happened for them was Russell Wilson deciding to come in after graduating in three years in Raleigh at North Carolina State and deciding to play for that man right there. And they've been able to really capitalize on his ability in so many different ways in his leadership. You're right. There's a lot at stake for both these teams. Well, Russell Wilson on the last drive led the Badgers right down the field. And you can see under pressure was able to step away from it, as Herbie has pointed out all day. That's the extra dimension, that running ability. 
And he didn't fumble the ball either. And now watch the vision. A little bit of an undersized quarterback. He's up there in the category, though, with Drew Brees, and he finds his throwing alleys. And when, when you're undersized, you have to find ways to cheat and take advantage of things, and that is timing. It's rhythm. It's anticipation. And, again, Carson York still down with the stretcher now looking to take him off the field. But he, he, he brings all of that. And I know he's undersized, but he is a gamer, a guy who was good enough to be drafted in the fourth round by the Colorado Rockies. Play, like I said all night, he plays with a, a certain swagger and certain demeanor about him that's pretty special. You know, Herbie, uh, what I wanted to ask you is uh, coming up right after us, we've got a good game down in the desert in the uh, Tostitos Fiesta Bowl. We've got uh, Andrew Luck, of course, and Stanford. You and I have watched him through the years. And like he's determined to win this against Brandon Wheaton, another former baseball player. Yeah, yeah, he's, and he's had a great year. Oklahoma State's offense is probably as explosive as anybody's. Justin Blackman and Wheaton get most of the attention, but uh, both of these offenses can attack in a number of ways. This has the makings of a shootout, much like this game. If you like offensive football, you're going to stay tuned to watch this game because Wheaton and Luck potentially could go back and forth, and this game could come down to turnovers. Can Oklahoma State, who has 42 turnovers, get the ball back to Whedon? So a nice round of applause for York. As he is carted off the field and uh, his work day appears to be over and let's hope that he's going to be okay. He's a fine young man. You know, there's another young man on that offensive line. Mark Asper out of Idaho Falls, Idaho number 79. And uh, as York waves to the crowd. But Asper, the other night, you probably read the story about the Heimlich maneuver at the Beef Bowl at Lowry's. The uh, father of a student at Oregon was choking a bit when he got over on him. And uh, Heimlich had been a uh, Eagle Scout at Idaho Falls, so he knew exactly what to do. And he wants to get the ball back now from these Badgers, and here we go. A collision that ball comes off of. A powerful run by Monty Ball. You better wrap up. I like the effort by Alonzo, but this is Monty Ball. And you been, you better bring your shoulders and wrap your arms if you want to be able to slow him down and tackle him. He not only takes on the hit, but he's able to survive it and then go down the sidelines and pick up four yards for a first down. So the Badgers are up three. We've come down to 220. Left here in quarter number three. Night beginning to descend in Southern California. Tripped up that time and can't quite get to the 30-yard line. Michael Clay with the stop. For young running backs, whether you're in high school or a freshman and you get discouraged, you should study Monty Ball. Monty Ball last year got beat out by a true freshman. He'd be the backup to John Clay. Instead of complaining or quitting, he just kept working. Ended up having a great second half last year replacing Clay along with White as a combination. And this year he loses 20 pounds and becomes the featured back. Has a big heart and runs with tremendous effort every single time he touches that football. 159 yards he's gained on the ground here today. He's also caught three passes for 44 more. Here he comes again. And he is stopped by Alonzo. Kiko Alonzo for the season a little bit in the doghouse with Coach Kelly and the Ducks, but it is clear that he possesses great linebacking skill. He's made some plays here today. The line of scrimmage is going to be at about the 33, 34 yard line for Chip Kelly. You have to admire Chip for running his best defensive back off the team when he didn't like his behavior several times over. Cliff Harris long gone. And a big time player. Third down and three. Russell Wilson fires and intercepted. A diving interception by that man Alonzo, who we have talked about. Kiko Alonzo from Los Gatos, California. When I was looking at Alonzo in the cushion, he was giving Pedersen on third down there, thinking, boy, he's giving him a pretty big cushion here. And I wonder if Russell Wilson's going to go to him. Look at that cushion. 
But this is almost, again, like backyard football, where you bait the guy to throw the ball, but you know exactly what you're doing because you're anticipating that he might make that throw, and he jumped that throw before Russell Wilson th got rid of it. And now the Ducks jump right to it. Here's the Michael James on the carry. The Ducks not wanting to let instant replay get a second look on that. <laughs> But it looked to me like he knew what he was doing as a receiver, folks. The way he held his hands out to catch the ball, brought it in, and then rolled over in that beautiful slow motion look. I think it was clearly an interception. What an athlete. And here's Thomas now. And LaMichael breaks free. Now LaMichael James starting to pound away. And he's feeling it. How about the vision here? Plays designed to go left. He puts his foot in the ground, cuts it back to the right. Borland does not have the lateral quickness to stay up with Michael James. They'll pick it up now as they approach the end zone. This from the 22. Michael, nothing doing. Made the most up. Ball came free. But I believe the Ducks, I believe that was Paulson who picked it up. I don't know if his knee was on the ground. That's the end of the draw for it. Yeah, Brent, it sounded like we may have had a whistle there. I mean, Oregon ends up recovering anyway, but... That was a fumble, but it was recovered by Paulson. Now, remember, a whistle can be overruled in a situation yep. like that. So a break for the Ducks. We've come to the end of the third quarter. Sun damage, age spots, dark marks. Stadium tradition comes to Pasadena, the House of Pain's jump around, turn and loose, Badgers. Then it was the Ducks' turn to throw their hands in the air. The Isley Brothers' classic shout. The players down on the field, folks, had all stopped to look at the uh, to look at the fans in the stands. Kenyon Barner. In as the running back for the Ducks, incomplete through a little bit of high huff back on the field. That's nice to see. He was shaken up in the first half. Muldoon that time getting a hand on that football. Uh, Oregon had a chance to pick up a first down. Nice play that time to knock that football away. They want to jump around now. The Badgers do. This is third and nine. Coming into the Badger fans part of the field. Throws in underneath. The Anthony breaks free. Steps out first down. They had a chance. It would have been a tough play to make for Desmond Southward. But he was there with a chance. Again, can Wisconsin make plays in space? That was a question and kind of a theme to this game. Southward was there. It's a tough ask. That time, DeAnthony Thomas pulled away from him for the first. Jet fake, Darren keeps it. Fires in zone, caught, touchdown, 2 and A again. Tune with two touchdown catches. Russell Wilson says, well, it'll be our turn now. That time, Darren Thomas, rolling to the short side did a really good job examining the field to the play side and then coming all the way to the back side to find two and a who was pulling away from a defender 42 38 oregon ESPN College Football, the Rose Bowl game, is presented by Vizio, delivering entertainment freedom for all. Cadillac. Tostitos. Tostitos knows how to party. And Discover Card. It pays to switch. It pays to discover. Eighty points. 
918 yards of offense. The biggest lead, seven points. And the Ducks hope to go past that now, up by four and a football back on the 10. And Michael for four yards before he's brought down by Borland. Ducks have had just so many big plays, and Wisconsin's defense trying to keep them deep in this territory. They fake the screen and come downfield to an A again. Midfield. They set three receivers to the right and faked the screen, and to an A went downfield. Well, this is a bread and butter play. If you're an Oregon Ducks fan, you've seen this a lot where they just show that kind of a decoy where they show that screen and then get it downfield to receiver. This time it's Tune, who was the inside receiver. Nobody picked him up because they were so concerned about that quick throw to the outside. That's 150 yards for Tune after that 41 yarder. Now the first down at the 45 yard line. Coming back with a run play and he picks up six, LaMichael James. Remember the game you and I called last year in the national championship against Auburn? 2 and A had a pretty good game. You expected a lot from Jeff Mayo, but 2 and A ends up having a pretty good day catching the football when Darren Thomas had to throw against Auburn because they couldn't run the ball. Second down with Barner. Darren Thomas looking downfield. Incomplete. Huff, the intended receiver. Well, Huff was there, and again, Darren Thomas made pretty good decisions for the most part. We've talked about how he's been a little bit errant on th some of his throws, but this time he buys enough time there and finds Huff, who's able to pull away from the defender. He's just got to be able to squeeze that. Scott Frost, the wide receiver coach in the background, one time Nebraska quarterback. Done a great job with these receivers through the years. There's the handoff to Barner. Barner got the first down. And we see that Tony Dungy's son, Eric Dungy, had been out on the field as they've got the first down. A hardworking youngster who doesn't get to see a lot of playing time. He was out for that play. There is the young man, Tony Dungy's son. First down from the 34, Anna Michael. At the line of scrimmage is brought down. Let me check that, that's Barner. Well, that time, Desmond Southward came up. You know, he played one year of high school football. One year of high school football at St. Thomas, down in uh, another player from St. Thomas. Uh, but just a tremendous athlete. They've asked him to play a lot tonight just to get more speed on the field. And that time he lowered the boom there on Barner. Second down and 10. Play action. Down the sideline, complete. DeAnthony Thomas at the seven yard line. There is a penalty flag out of it. Holding offense in the 74. 10 yard penalty. Second down. That's Darian Weems back on the field. He's lost his guard, Carson York. Weems was out for a time. He's isolated one on one against Tyler Dipple and just locks him up around the neck. I mean, that, that is an easy call right in front of the referee and a no no by Weems. Weems has sat out a series or two. And they put Ryan Clanton in there, but I would assume with York out, just for continuity purposes and communication, they would rather have the veteran Weems back in the lineup. But that time, makes a big mistake. Greg, and there's movement down in there by the guard. So there's the young man who replaced Carson York, and that's a false start. Come to Greg, and it'll be brought back five yards. So. This series is suddenly going in reverse. Greg just moves. Lack of mental awareness there. Back to back plays. The Ducks have gone in the wrong direction. Second and 25. And they come back attacking with the running play, and Barner still on the field. 
Now that play right there gives Darren Thomas a chance here. With the way this game has gone, and with the concerns they've had over the year with their field goal kicking, you wonder if this is still, depending on where they get, potentially four down territory for Chip Kelly. Darren gonna throw it, come in underneath and try to pick it up with DeAnthony Thomas, who's down at the 30 yard line. And now this will bring up the fourth down. Mike Taylor makes the stop, and here comes the decision. 47-yard field goal from there. They're going to go. Going to go. Got what he wants. Fourth down. Darren Thomas throws in underneath, and they've got the first down. Two and A. Comes back and makes still another catch. They brought pressure up the middle. Oregon picks it up and gives Darren Thomas just enough time this time to be able to make the throw on fourth down. And Tune again comes up big for this Ducks offense. Tune now with 158 yards on his eight catches. LaMichael James checks back into the backfield. And he'll get this carry. And he has stopped as he came across the 20-yard line. But it's not just that Chip Kelly goes for it on fourth down. It's that his offense knows that if we don't make it, get lined up and go fast. I was impressed that Wisconsin was actually lined up and got their call in and got to try to get the pressure on Darren Thomas. Now Barner back in. His turn up the middle. And this becomes third and manageable. And you know now... He's certainly in four down territory down here, up by four. Ducks have had this drive now going on 11 plays, 74 yards, over five minutes. And they've come to another fourth down. The young man who scored a touchdown, Nizegwu, with that defensive stop for the Badgers. Looking for the play call for the sideline. The team still checking over there. Chip, Chip's going to let the play clock go down here. Get the timeout and maybe bring out the kicker, try to get it to be a seven point game. And then here comes that kicking team. We watched Maldonado in practice. I mean, he was making them 45 yards. That's practice. Game pressure practice. is different than practice. <laughs> if you had a choice between going bald and a full head of hair, which would you choose? Advances in medical science have resulted in the world's first and... Vitos Fiesta Bowl is next. Andrew Luck and the Stanford Cardinal will take on the Oklahoma State Cowboys. <laughs> Looks like they're ready to have a little fun down there in the desert. <laughs> and we've still got a little time left here. 6.55. Maldonado on. His holder is Jackson Rice. But Jackson Rice, a very good quarterback as a holder. He's the young man who signals whether they're going to go for two or one on the extra point. This would be a 30-yarder. And it would put the Ducks up by seven. Got it. That's big for Maldonado. Big. Always heard about it from the time he missed the USC field goal. Is Oregon can't kick, and that time he steps up big with the Rose Bowl on the line. It, this drive was started way back deep in their own territory where Wisconsin bit on that quick throw to the outside, bit up on it, opened it up for a big throw to two and a downfield. And let's not forget that fourth down. Wisconsin brings pressure. He senses it, feels it, makes it just a little step off to the right there to buy a little time. Makes the throw again over to two and a for that first down to keep that drive alive and keep moving them closer and closer for a potential field goal. You know, it's interesting, Chip Kelly. Sound football is to kick the field goal, make it seven. That's 
Vince Lombardi would have done that. But you know what he was thinking in the back of his mind? It's I just made me. the last fourth down. It's killing me. Why could I got to go again? You know, and, and he kept thinking about it. He talked to the official, talked to the oh, time out. Just put the kicking team out. You know, he, he went, ended up going for it on fourth down coming into tonight 30 times on the year. I mean, he, it's kind of in his M.O. To, to go for it on fourth. What a great scene now as night descends on Southern California and Farmers Insurance bringing you this area of coverage of the Rose Bowl. Coverage for your auto, home, life, and business. Farmers Insurance. We've had a dandy at the granddaddy. 6.50 still to go. 45-38. Rudd Bailman, the Badgers, about to get it back. Already in the Big Ten, I believe it was their lone win. They went triple overtime as Michigan State defeated Georgia. And now here are the Badgers going toe to toe with the best of the Pac-12. Everdaris. Twenty comes wide right. The 30 yard line. Let's take a look at today's good hands play of the game brought to you by Allstate. And we saw Kiko Alonso make this play, which was big, and getting the ball back to the Ducks. But how about the athletic ability? Third down, he gives Pedersen a cushion and then lays out in front of him, jumps the route, and comes up with a big turnover to give the ball back to the Ducks. Pretty good game for Kiko Alonso. A wonderful game, especially that big interception. Monty Ball. With 161 yards. In as the running back. And he's thrown back. He's going to give a yard or two back on that tackle by Clay. We've talked a lot about Alonzo, but Michael Clay, who is really the glue of this defense, taking over for Casey Matthews with the leadership that comes off of the potential block by Jacob Pedersen, fights through that and still makes a play on one of the more physical running backs that he's faced all year. Tremendous effort that time by Oregon's defense. Second and 11. From the gun. And Toon makes the catch at the 33-yard line. Third down and a record-setting day here in Pasadena. The longest run from scrimmage, and now a couple of Rose Bowl overall scoring records. 83 total points, and that breaks the previous record. Set in 91 between Washington and Iowa. They had a record-scoring first half. Monty Ball has tied Barry Sanders with a single-season touchdown record with 39. He dearly would love to get number 40 here and bring the Badgers back into a tie. On this third and six, Wilson in trouble, gets it off. Toon reaches and got the first down. Wow, that was a great play by Russell Wilson to buy just enough time. Here's our view from the DirecTV Ultimate Picture Cam. Good job of looking off to the left. And as a last resort, Brent, he finds Nick Toon. I mean, he was clearly going to his left. Look at his eyes. He comes all the way back to the right, almost as a check down, and finds Nick Toon. And how about the effort by Toon to extend the ball and get that first down? Here comes Ball into the middle. You can see Big Oglesby reaching down for a leg. He's 300-pound offensive lineman of the Badgers now. Monty Ball looked like he was limping a bit coming back to the huddle. Stays on the field. Second down and six. Play action. Got a man open. Aberderis, 30. Fumble. The Ducks pounce on it. 
Aberderis lost the ball on that sideline if he wasn't already down. Down around the 30-yard line. Let's take a big look at this. He knocks the football loose. The ball somehow stays in bounds. It never comes close to going to the boundary. Ball's out. Great play by Mitchell to knock it free. <laughs> it looks like Chip Kelly jumping up there. I thought he was going to try to recover it. Michael Clay got over there in the middle of it, and he comes up with the football. Now watch from behind. The ball is free. Now watch There's Clay, Clay right go there. diving. Clay got it. Mitchell knocks it away after he was beaten badly by Aberderis to get open. But good job of knocking the ball loose. How about the ball? The momentum is going towards it's going to go out of bounds, and it just sits there like your wedge. It just pulled right back. <laughs> you said it earlier to me during commercial. You said... This game's going to revolve around a turnover One mistake, late. late. And you know what? There it is. This could be it. Could be the it. only thing is, folks, remember this. Ball control is not a duck strength. <laughs> that last drive they had took forever. It was five minutes. I mean, that's it. <laughs> that might be their longest of the season. That's exactly. But, boy, Aberderis made a, I mean, a great move on Mitchell. Had a big was first down. Wide open, a big first down, deep in Oregon's territory. Pulling on the field stands. First down, Oregon. Oregon brought pressure, and Aberderis took advantage of the one on one matchup, but give Mitchell credit for knocking that football loose. Yeah, I want to say something about this officiating crew from the ACC. Brad Allen's our referee, and up here in the booth with us, Tom Zimorski. And we've got the replay booth. These guys have done a real good job here today. First down and 10. Inside to LaMichael James. And James is to the 33-yard line. And now Chip Kelly will try to chip away at that clock. This is the route before where he was able to look how he turns Mitchell around completely. Just a great job. He's wide open. Well executed. He just doesn't hold on to the football. This is Oregon's version now of working the clock. They still go to the hurry up. But now they just sit there and look over to Chip Kelly and let the play clock work down. If you're Wisconsin, it's a one possession game now. The Rose Bowl Championship's on the line. If they give up any points at all, this game's over. They've got to attack this Oregon offense. And now we look back at that timeout that Brett Bielema used. And, of course, now they're only left with one here late in the game. That ball came free. But he was down. He recovered it. Johnson was trying to get on it. So now three minutes coming up. Oregon up by seven with a third down at one. So he gets them lined up. And Wisconsin's so used to the hurry up mode. And now the play clock works its way down inside five seconds, which is where Darren Thomas eventually is going to snap this. And he battles for the first down. Now down to two and a half. So um, what is that? Will it be 95 years? <laughs> yeah. I did good. not do that game. You did not. <laughs> you did not. So there is the uh, the team back in 1917. That's that's the uniforms have come a long ways, haven't they, folks? First down and ten. Looking over to the sidelines. Work that clock. Wisconsin has got to stop them. Use their last time out. Time out. Wisconsin. That's their third and final charge time out of the half. That's the sound of raw power. Mantis power that puts you in charge. Now.
courtesy of the Direct TV Ultimate Picture Cam. And uh, let us thank our director, Derek Mobley, our producer, Bill Bonnell, associate director, Bonnie Riley, and technical director, John Zippy, the East Raider, Bob Salmi, Paul Krugman, and all of our gang, including associate producer, Brian Boyle. So thanks to everybody on the crew for the job that they have done with this Rose Bowl and they'll pack up their gear and they'll head down to one of the busiest sports weeks ever in New Orleans. The Saints with a home game on Saturday night against the Detroit Lions. Get on down there. We'll go on there and watch a few of the, those rascals play. And then Monday night it's LSU and Alabama for the national championship. Still on the clock now. Third down. Obviously, clock out of timeouts, clock moving. Here comes a Michael, and he's not going to get it. Stays in bounds, goes down. This egg Wu scored a touchdown, defensive touchdown for the Badgers, making the play over there. Mm. This is where not having a timeout really hurts as you watch those yeah. seconds start to tick off that clock right now. You're looking at they're going to bring off 15, 20 seconds no depending question. on the return. No question. And he's coming down to a certain point. He got it down to 23. Seconds. Yeah, and like I said, if you include the, the potential punt and the return, unless they get a fair catch call, it's going to be 15 to 18 seconds. And they would have been able to stop it up around 55, somewhere in there. Okay. Right, right. The Badgers have had a timeout in their pocket. We want to take you back because this was the, the moment in time that uh, Kirby and I have talked about. Now, this is where DeAnthony hesitated. The fans and the coaches thought maybe he should have been ruled out, but the entire football is not out of the end zone. So that line judge watching there made the good call, and then Brett burns a timeout to try and talk to them. And, and the crowd saw the, the replay on the jumbo screen and saw his foot touch, touch the line and reacted. And Brett Bielema ended up calling the timeout. So here's Aberderis. Makes a fair catch at the 12. And look who's down on top of him, DeAnthony Thomas, who had been practicing all week as one of the gunners. And they send him in at this time to make sure that Abraderas does not get a return. How about this <laughs> freshman here tonight? One of the gunners after two long touchdowns, including a record setter, 91 yards, the longest run from scrimmage. And there he was all over, Abraderas. Wow, what a night for the freshman. He had a big smile on his face coming back, coming down on that, that punt uh, coverage team. Hometown, back home, high school here, of course, in Los Angeles. 16 seconds for Russell Wilson. Pump coming long. Got Aberdeer. So we got to get out of bounds. Nine seconds. And the problem here, of course, is they need a touchdown. They've got to go the distance. Field goal won't help them. Well, he picks up some big yards, picks up the first down, which would have stopped the clock. But then Aberderis gets out of bounds. If you're Oregon, you don't want to get cute here. Any chance you have to keep Wisconsin in bounds, you want to. Ali Odi sets his safeties back on his own 25, nearly 20-yard line right now. In a prevent, Wilson. He's got Toon and down in the field. So Toon is upended and it'll stop briefly. There's no time to really spike it with two seconds, is there? And Toon is shaken up onto play. He's going to stay on the field. This looks like the last snap of the ball game. He's going to try to spike it here. And he did. But I, the clock time ran out, didn't it? Let's see what. Now, wait a minute. They say put a second back, I think. Hang on here. How about Russell Wilson in Wisconsin just moving the ball right down? I mean, I understand playing prevent by Oregon, but they didn't do anything well, to hold back the Wisconsin receivers and try to reroute them. I mean, they just walked down watch field. Watch this with the clock now. 
I'm not sure that he got it off. I think it's going to be really close. I listen. Two seconds is a big gamble to attempt sure a spike. Is. I just I assumed he was going to spike it because of the alignment of the wide receivers, and that doesn't look like an alignment for a last play. And the Ducks think the game is over. They're still over there on the sideline. Brent, they may have. Did they start the clock before it was the ball was snapped? Let's take another look at this as to when it started. Watch the official's arm. Wind it. He doesn't get it off. No, he sure doesn't. According to that, he doesn't the, get it off. You clock, saw the referee wind the clock. The, the clock responded to the officials in the appropriate manner. After further review, prior to the spiking of the pass, the clock went to zero. The game is over. The Oregon Ducks win the 98th Rose Bowl. Chip Kelly finally captures a BCS victory. And another Pasadena heartbreak for the Badgers. The trophy will go north to Eugene, Oregon. A team that may have given LSU its best game of the year. And that was back in the opener. And then they were scratching and clawing to get back in that BCS battle. And what a hug for Alonzo, yeah, who that, played a great game after I told you he'd been in the coach's doghouse earlier special, this year. Very special moment, Brent, for Kiki Alonzo, player that was in the doghouse, but also Chip Kelly went to bat for him, continued to believe in, and ends up having an outstanding game here in the biggest game of the year for the Oregon team. No question. What a crazy game that had about everything you can imagine. How about Russell Wilson giving the Badgers potentially a chance? They went right down the field, bang, two plays. Who knows? One more second. Never know. And now you look back on that timeout, that lost timeout. Not only that, think of the Wisconsin season and their losses. Think of their last four losses. The three this year, the game last year against TCU came down to a two-point conversion. Tank, Petter, Tank uh, Carter knocks that ball down against Scott Tolzien. Badgers have been so close in so many big games. Just two passes away from a undisputed Big Ten championship and probably a trip to the national championship game although who knows under that circumstance what would have happened in the in the conference championship game but you've got to feel very happy for these ducks they battled auburn all the way last year down in the desert for a national championship the year before that they lost to ohio state here in pasadena darren thomas starting to mature as a quarterback so we had to take a little bit of a break here but come on back for the award ceremony. The Oregon Ducks are the Rose Bowl champions. Mama, what's up? So the Gatorade bath, the tradition, and Chip Kelly trying to run away from it. Not now, guys, not now. We've got to get the trophy. I want to congratulate Coach Bielman on his great year. So let's go back down now. And Herbie, take us through this last drive. Yeah, it's definitely worth going back and kind of catching our breath to remember Aberderis has that fair catch. They're way back inside their own 15-yard line. The first pass only takes about five or six seconds up. And then this is the big play, a little pump fake. He gets his man tuned downfield. Two seconds left. They try to get up to the line of scrimmage. You can see the referee right there starts to move his arm. The operator here starts to move the clock. Peter Kahn's and Russell Wilson, two of the best players, most experienced players, a little bit late in getting the snap up. And they just don't quite have enough time to get one more shot at the end zone. And Brett Bielema's thinking, my gosh, can I catch a break? 
And the big one here, the granddaddy of them all. So let's go down to Chris Fowler now for the trophy presentation. Chris. Brent, thank you. We've all seen something very special, folks. Not many of the 98 Rose Bowls have been as entertaining as this. Time now for the trophy presentation. We first recognize Mr. William Wang, the founder and the CEO of Vizio, and now Rick Jackson, the 2012 Tournament of Roses president, present the trophy, Rick. On behalf of the Tournament of Roses, I am pleased to present to you, Coach Kelly, the Rose Bowl Games Champions Trophy. Congratulations. Folks, I, I, I don't know how many of you were here for the 1917 Rose Bowl, but that was the last time and the only time the Oregon Ducks have won this game. Chip, what does this victory represent for the program? You know, for all of our fans out there, it's been 95 years since you could say Oregon Ducks Rose Bowl champions. And it's about this, this group right here. You guys had to fight for four quarters, just as you have in a couple of big stages in recent years. What to you made the difference down the stretch? I think these kids just believe they have a faith in each other, that it's always going to work out for them, and it's based on their preparation. They buy into everything. Our coaching staff and our players get along so well. There's a great chemistry between all of us because we love and respect each other. We'll talk to the two MVPs, one of them the defensive MVP, Kiko Alonso, a guy who's had an interesting journey or had to overcome a lot, his own mistakes and some bad luck. What does this represent to you as his coach the night he had this? Today? Yeah, I, I get welled up about that, but I love Kiko, and I told him it wasn't about his interception, but what he's done and how he's come back is what this deal's all about. He's an outstanding young man. I love the kid. Chip, congratulations. Let's speak now to the defensive player of the game. You're back here in your home state. We talked about your journey here, which has been, you know, some bad luck's been part of it. Your mistakes have been part of it. What does this represent to persevere and have this game? Man, it feels great. Uh, it's been a long run. We've been doing this since, since January, and we knew that we had, to, we had to go all the way, all four quarters, and it feels great. Your interception set up the game-winning points. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Let's bring in Lavoisier, too, and a couple of touchdowns. Your final game was an Oregon Duck. What does this represent to you? Man, yeah, it's a great feeling. I mean, we, we worked hard to get to this point, and when we had the opportunity to, you know, come out like this, everyone stepped up, and we won. Congratulations to the Ducks. Brent, back to you. All right, and up next on ESPN, the Tostino.